KSAT 12 News, San Antonio, affiliated with ABC News, where most Texans watch the news. Now, KSAT 12 News tonight. Good evening, Bob Salter reporting. Two young children were having too much fun in the cool waters of the Medina River to notice the storm raging around them until the violent winds snapped a nearby tree like a matchstick. In that instant, the huge limb crashed down on the waiting children, knocking them unconscious into the water. Witnesses who rushed to pull the kids out of the river say the violent wind struck so suddenly, there was no time to react. We heard a crack on the tree, and we looked up, and we, by the time we screamed, uh, watch out, you know, the kids were, the tree had fallen on top of two little kids. Freak accident happened in southwest Bayer County near McDonough. The two children, six-year-old Jasmine Garza, four-year-old Jaime Garza, were both rushed to Wilfred Hall Hospital, where they are listed in critical and fair conditions respectively tonight. Witnesses say it appeared the toppled tree was rotten and splintered easily in the strong wind. Story of international intrigue tonight with a San Antonio connection. U.S. Customs agents say they have broken up or at least interfered with a plot to overthrow the Yugoslavian government. Marilyn Moritz has details. This was the bait. Automatic weapons, grenades, heavy military hardware. The bait used to bust in Phoenix three men accused of conspiring to buy and export the weapons. U.S. Customs agents went undercover and met with the accused, two Yugoslavian nationals and one former Yugoslavian. They met in San Antonio public places and hotels for negotiations. What were you telling these people? That we were illegal arms dealers. And he says they wanted mass quantities. During undercover negotiations, the term 33 tons was used. He says they were especially interested in the M16s and grenade launchers. The agents demanded the money up front, $450,000 deposited in Frost National Bank in San Antonio. As for what agents say the accused wanted the weapons for... They were going to be illegally exported from the eastern coast of the United States, I'm pretty sure it was through New York City, to Yugoslavia to be used in a uh, government overthrow. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Just four days after being released from federal custody, former San Antonio lawyer Julia Marquez is back behind bars tonight. The FBI arrested Marquez today on a weapons charge out of Illinois. That gun possession charge is linked to a kidnap and bank robbery charge in a California case. Last week, Marquez was released on bond on another weapons charge. He previously had been acquitted on the California kidnap and bank robbery charges. Marquez was stripped of her license to practice law because of her long history of trouble with federal authorities. A hearing on her latest charge will be later on this week. He was on his way to a bright future and new challenges. It turned out to be a tragically short trip indeed for Michael Yost. The 19-year-old was killed this morning in a car wreck just hours after he walked across the stage and received his high school diploma from Lee High School. His graduation cap and gown were still in the wreckage of his car when authorities found young Yost early this morning. His car had veered off Dreamland, slammed into a tree. His art teacher, shocked by the student's death, remembered a conversation with a graduate only last night. He came through the line, I grabbed his hand, and I, I said, Michael, go get him. And uh, he hit me on the shoulder and he said, I will, Mr. Cook, don't worry. And you have every reason to believe that he would have? Oh, yeah. He was one of the best I've ever had. Michael Yost was a blooming artist who earlier this year had won a first place award in statewide art competition. Another school in the news tonight in this case. Nobody was injured, but part of the building was destroyed. Tony Fama reports one classroom at Ray Corbett Junior High School was gutted by fire. And investigators say it was no accident. It was about 2.30 this morning when fire ripped through the home economics room at Corbett Junior High. The heat was so severe, a thermostat in the room melted, and so did a television. Renee Hartley took home ec courses in the mid-70s in this classroom. It's the classroom they used to attend. It's real sad. So the fire uh, started in this area here, and of course spread into the, uh, the classroom uh, part of it. Rick Walpole is principal at Corbett. He thinks vandals may have set the fire. And with a broken window in the rear of the building, he may be right. We found, found some evidence, yes, that there was a break-in. What type of evidence? Well, there was a window broken out and a, in a couple of areas there. We had a couple of windows that were broken out. So it appears that someone did break in uh, to the school. But nothing is reported stolen. The arson investigator says kids in shirts just aren't violent. He admits this could be a bad sign. It's uh, not typical for this city. 
Uh, it's um, atypical. If it's something they're beginning to get into, we need to put a quick stop to it. There is a poignant irony here. This is the building damaged by fire, but only a few feet away, a brand new structure inside a gymnasium. And about 200 yards away, there is a second new structure. In that one will be some new classrooms. At Corbett, there has been an ongoing expansion to ease classroom overcrowding. The fire has slowed that process, and it hurts. It hurts a lot. Uh, we've uh, been kind of improving the school over the last four years that I've been here. We have two new building programs going on right now. Damage is estimated at a maximum $300,000. Tony Fama, KSAT 12 News. Well, it looks like the gloves will be coming off when the Civil Rights Bill comes up for a vote in the U.S. House tomorrow. The goal of the bill is to bring an end to job discrimination. Problem is, President Bush doesn't like the legislation in its present form. He says it will create quotas and says it's written in a bad way to make him look bad. They wanted a political win. They wanted to grind me into the political dirt. And we have a good record on civil rights, and we have a good history of fair play. And I want a fair, strong, anti-discrimination bill that will guarantee workers' rights, women's rights, workplace rights, but will not create quotas. President's critics sounded just as harsh today. The ugly truth behind the quota smear is that cynical political leaders are trying to turn a civil rights issue into a political issue that plays on irrational fears and latent racism. An ABC News Washington Post poll shows whites and blacks are deeply polarized on hiring issues. 88% of whites polled say minorities should not be given preference in hiring, but 64% of blacks say minorities should receive special consideration. 11 people are dead, at least 20 have been injured, and 30 others are missing tonight after a volcano eruption in Japan. An American researcher was among those missing. Mount Unzen sent lava and hot ash pouring into nearby valleys at speeds of up to 125 miles an hour. A policeman was among the dead. He was warning people to leave the area when lava engulfed his car. Police say fires and the potential for more eruptions makes it impossible for them to search the area. Mount Unzen in southwest Japan began erupting on May 24th after lying dormant for 200 years. The previous eruption killed 15,000 people two centuries ago. Things are heating up in a different way in Lithuania. Tonight there are reports that Soviet troops seem to be preparing to attack the Lithuanian capital of Vilnius. But later came word that the troops were pulling back from checkpoints that they had previously established. Before doing so, however, soldiers arrested three people. Shortly thereafter, thousands of Lithuanians gathered around the parliament building to show support for their government. San Antonio is still extending the welcome mat for heroes of the Persian Gulf War, the latest group to return to the Alamo City, the 49th Air Traffic Controller Squadron. The 49th spent four months in Kuwait and Saudi Arabia, and something else made this National Guard unit stand out from the others. It sent a father and son to serve together in Operation Desert Storm. Bill, was it tough to be over there and serve with your son? Well, it wasn't tough serving with him because we're in two separate sections, but it was kind of tough because we'd I'd go off somewhere and he'd be there with the unit and we'd be with a separate area and then he'd go off in another area. So it was a, yeah, father and son worry, you know, you're always going to be worried about them. Robert, is it tough to serve overseas and have dad looking over your shoulder? Well, actually, it was uh, beneficial, you know, have a little extra moral support. So uh, I think it was more tough on, the, on my mom and, uh, you know, the rest of the kids to have both me and my dad in overseas. 41 men and their families were honored at Martindale Field this morning. Later on in the newscast, another major league manager out of a job, Tulane, told to take a hike. But first, Willie Nelson's new release deals with taxes, not taxes. And we'll tell you how you can keep your kids occupied now that school's out and tell you why Prince William of England was rushed from school to the hospital today after this. Hey, hey way to go, youth. <laughs> You know, the folks at Miller wanted to say thanks to all the Miller Lite drinkers for making it the world's biggest selling light beer. Youngster, way to go, man. So they asked if I'd help make the world's biggest t-shirt. No problemo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you think of that, Texas? Yuke, you weren't supposed to make the world's biggest t-shirt. It was supposed to be the world's biggest t-shirt offer. You know, so every Miller Lite drinker could wear one. Ah, uh, way to go, Yuke. Picky, picky, picky. <laughs> Ooh, what is that thing? Excuse me, do you know what that thing is? No, I don't hey, know. Hey, honey. Ooh, that looks good. What is 
that thing? That looks like the thing. I didn't know what it was the last time I saw it. What? That thing was a whole other thing. What is that thing? That thing is the steak fajita melt at Jack in the Box. It's a whole new kind of sandwich, and it's here. What is that thing? I'm glad you asked that question. That thing. A rap star Vanilla Ice may have to spend some time in the cooler. He was arrested today in L.A. after allegedly waving a gun at a man at a grocery store parking lot. Reportedly, the man approached his car, tried to sell Ice a piece of jewelry. The rapper then allegedly aimed the gun at the man and told him to leave. The man fled and called police. He says he thought Ice and his three companions were going to rob the store. One gun was found in Ice's car, another one on one of his companions. The city attorney there will decide whether to file charges. Ice was released this afternoon on his own recognizance. Willie Nelson is hoping his new album reaps dividends with the general public and the Internal Revenue Service. At last check, Willie owed the IRS more than $17 million in back taxes. And as part of the settlement, profits from the new album will be used to settle the debt. The release has the appropriate title of Who Will Buy My Memories, The IRS Takes. The IRS is not only the benefactor from the album, but also will handle sales and promotion through a special 1-800 number. Former patients of a Fort Worth area anesthesiologist who died from AIDS underwent medical tests today. Officials want to make sure that none of the patients has contracted the deadly virus. The patients don't seem too worried, though. He had gloves on and a mask and everything. I don't worry about stuff till there's something to worry about. It's, it's just mainly peace of mind. I don't think having a, I had a spinal, and I don't think having had a spinal or anything that there's a real danger, but it doesn't hurt to check. Dr. Guajardo worked at the hospital between 84 and 1989. It was revealed last week he died of AIDS-related complications. A 14-year-old Florida boy suffering from the AIDS virus will be marrying his high school sweetheart, and the union has the blessing of both families. Ricky Ray is one of three Florida brothers who have tested HIV positive. Ricky and one of his brothers have since developed the AIDS virus. They apparently received tainted blood while being treated for hemophilia. Ricky says his uncertain future made him schedule his wedding for December. San Antonio has been chosen to kick off a 12-city tour of a special exhibit of World War II memorabilia. On the steps of the National Archives today, the U.S. government announced the exhibit will open on December 7th, the 50th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. The traveling exhibition will be called World War II Personal Accounts from Pearl Harbor to VJ Day. We were especially excited about the educational thrust of the exhibition. The chance to tell our youth what World War II meant and still means to America. With this commemoration, we can come to understand better the spirit of sacrifice, the unity of purpose, and the level of commitment that our country enjoyed 50 years ago. We can begin to comprehend this global conflict that did so much to shape the world we live in today. The World War II exhibit will be featured at the San Antonio Museum of Art, the McNay, the Witte, and the Institute of Texan Cultures. It had almost as bumpy a landing as the first famous flight to take place at Kitty Hawk, and although the Wright brothers didn't have quite the equipment at Daniel Shanklin's disposal today, they would have been proud of him nevertheless. When the seven-year-old San Antonio boy touched down, or bounced down, at Kill Devil Hill this morning, he completed the last leg of his historic cross-country journey. Daniel had some help along the way. His nine-year-old brother Michael, their grandfather, and a flight instructor also made the trip, which began in San Diego last week. Daniel celebrates its eighth birthday later on this week, and he'll begin the third grade in the fall. The White Brothers' famous first flight happened on Kill Devil Hill at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina in 1903. For most of us, Fiesta is a time to leave all the hard work behind and have a good time, but to ensure that those of us who party leave with a smile, there are some who have to work, and that's where the constable over in Precinct 4 comes in. Tonight, Matthew Marshall and his staff were honored by the state's Alcoholic Beverage Commission for helping out during Fiesta Week. Marshall was handed a certificate of merit for a job well done. Well, we had a few showers, breeze through the area, and actually some Bumpy pretty heavy there. winds. Uh, in pretty good wind gusts, pretty good wind gusts, up to well over 40 mile an hour wind gusts here in the, uh, in the area. And in San Antonio, uh, we had some good gusts also. Now, the forecast is calling for not as bad tomorrow. However, the threat of an isolated shower could develop tonight, again tomorrow, especially with daytime heating. We'll show you the amounts of rain we picked up here in the area. The human shoe it poses no threat. The aerosol spray, roaches can just hide inside walls. The household fogger, roaches can simply avoid the area. 
<gasps> the Combat Roach Control System. After roaches eat the poison, they carry it inside the walls where more roaches eat it and die. With combat, there is no hope. There is no escape. For less than the cost of new slam dunk high tops, you could put a down payment on a HUD home, complete with a regulation size driveway. Normal closing costs and fees apply. Go for size, not We don't location. make enough. A mortgage is a mortgage. Let HUD set you straight if everyone is offering you advice on buying your dream home. Kids, nothing could be sweeter or more trying, especially when they do the things which, for their own good, of course, you repeatedly ask them not to do. And that's why, when your little accident waiting for a place to happen does, the Children's Emergency Center at Methodist Hospital is always ready. Because kids aren't childproof. Things have settled down here in San Antonio. We were quite gusty this afternoon. Very uh, awesome looking cloud cover above us. And now they've basically moved away. Skies remain somewhat cloudy, but most of the showers are now heading toward the coastline. Here is a look at our current conditions. We remain mostly cloudy. The temperature right at 68 degrees. Quite cool. The humidity level, though, 87%. Wind dew point is 64, with the wind now from the northeast at 10 miles an hour. Barometer reading, 29.88 and rising. We had a trace of rainfall at the National Weather Service by the airport. Some of you obviously may have picked up a little bit more than that with those isolated showers that moved through. Low this morning was 77. The high made it up to 93 degrees, and that occurred up around 3 o'clock in the afternoon at, because by 4 and 5 o'clock, that's when the temperature took a dive as those showers moved on through and cooled us down. Pollen counter indicates molds are moderate while grass is the same. Aquifer level still on the minus side, a little over one foot on the minus side. It is at 654.6 foot level. Now, it's time for some wa water-wise info. Remember, if you're going to be washing dishes, scrape the dishes before you wash them, and also try not to rinse them with the tap water running constantly. That wastes a lot of water. So let's conserve for this time of the year. Now, let's look outside. Doppler storm scan. All the showers and storms have basically moved away, and mo they are hanging generally from Victoria northeastward up towards Houston, Galveston, Port Arthur, northward into Lufkin. But the nearest shower to us in Bear County is way to the south. It's way south uh, approaching the uh, Alice area and uh, near Corpus Christi, way to the west of Corpus Christi. It continues to move very slowly to the south. The showers we saw were, had been hanging across north-central Texas. Uh, they continued to develop across the hill country, moving southward slowly. And they did move very slowly, but once they got here, they managed to produce a good wind gust. Anywhere from well over 30 mile an hour wind gusts were clocked here in San Antonio. However, in the Austin area, they had wind gusts well over 40 miles an hour. And no hail reported with any of the storms, just plenty of wind gusts, some lightning, uh, some good brief heavy showers, and that was about it. We look at the rainfall amounts across San Antonio and Bear County. Anywhere from the airport to Live Oak over down to the southeast into Stinson, back over to Kelly Air Force Base, northward again into Leon Valley. Rainfall amounts were basically a trace all over the area. Again, some areas picked up a little more than that with the isolated storms. Here's the latest satellite picture now showing you that plumage way right over San Antonio to the northeast heading towards Houston, northward into College Station and Waco, even Lufkin. This is where the heavier shower th and thunderstorms will continue through the evening hours, and they will be moving very slowly to the southeast. Heavy showers and thunderstorms are possible to the southwest of Eagle Pass and Del Rio. They could move their way, but for tonight, they're hanging to the southwest of, of the uh, borderline. Here is that trough line moving through the panhandle. It is a wind shift line, a low across Kansas. This low will move to the northeast a little bit, still attracting some moisture from the southeast. So that combined with a couple of upper air impulses moving through the northern tier of the state, that will continue to set off a shower or two. This afternoon's highs were in the 80s and 90s until they reached the 4 and 5 o'clock hour. That's when the temperature took a steady dive. But the showers continue right around Houston northward, moving slowly to the southeast. Flash flood watches could be in effect this evening. Right now, everything seems to be okay. And then it breaks up until you head to across the plains where a severe thunderstorm watch is in effect. And we will look at tomorrow in just a moment.
three people stay in touch, special things happen. Well, I guess we all like him. That's the idea behind three-way calling. Hello? Hello? Allison Gale, he asked me out. To order three-way calling or for a free brochure, call 1-800-234-BELL. Southwestern Bell Telephone, the one to call on. Time to rise and shine, fun seekers. Southwest Airlines fun fairs are back. Well, you waited so long for a fair to get so nice and long. Now. Now you really Light up the night. Southwest Airlines' new fun fairs are so low. Want to see that again? Now you can fly just for the fun of it. Tomorrow, the low moves farther northward into the plains, but here's a trough line that'll linger right across the Panhandle, Abilene down to near Del Rio. Showers and thunderstorms to the northeast, showers and thunderstorms possible from Houston to near San Antonio, and southward with that high pumping more moisture our way and daytime heating combined. Here comes the showers again. Here's the forecast tonight, mostly cloudy, a 30% chance of showers or thunderstorms, a low of 67 with an easterly wind at 5 to 10 miles an hour. Tomorrow, heavy clouds in the morning, but turning partly cloudy in the afternoon. We'll have a 20% chance of an afternoon shower or thunderstorm. Storm, the high about 94 with a south southeasterly wind at 10 to 50 miles an hour. Extended forecast partly cloudy to mostly cloudy on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, a little more sunshine by then, and Saturday the same. Lows in the 70s, highs will be in the 90s. So things have settled down. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. Well, the kids have been out of school only for a few days, and already you're racking your brain on how to give them a fun and educational summer. Luckily, KSAT 12's Donna Parker has been doing the research for you, and here are her findings tonight. Are we ready? Yes. Northeast Community Education is offering the Kids Camp this summer week-long programs that cost $85 and run from 9 until 4, with before and after hours care available. It's more than just keeping them occupied. It's, it's a very uh, a physical type of camp, as well as educational, as well as cultural enrichment. And we're trying to sort of combine all of it together so they get a whole real well-rounded type program. Don't pull yet. Don't pull. Go, 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 go looks like fun, but the true test is whether the participants like it. I have to come here because they won't let me stay home alone. Do you like coming out here? Uh-huh. It's fun. And what would you be doing if you weren't out here? Probably sitting home watching TV, playing with my friends. Is this better? Yeah. Some teens this summer have decided to spend their time devoted to community improvement by house painting. Who the hell to poor people? It's kind of fun doing this and to help people. And it's kind of a good feeling. And let's just say the residents are glad to have them. Still one of the best things about summer vacation is being able to cool off in the Texas heat, even if you can only get your feet wet. No, I take that back. The best thing is... Uh, no school! <laughs> Donna Parker, KSAT 12 News. Well, school turned out to be one big headache for Prince William of England today, the eight-year-old son of Prince Charles and Princess Diana. <clears throat> Excuse me. Heavens. Suffered a fractured skull when he was hit in the head by a golf club during his lunch break. The school spokesman termed the injury an accident. Prince William underwent 70-minute operation to correct the fracture. He likely will remain in the hospital for the next couple of days, but he'll be all right. Spokesman says the prince was quite chatty after the incident. He is the second in line to the British throne right now. Can you imagine the poor child that accidentally hit him? I mean, immediately wrestled to the ground by the Royal Secret Service? Oh. No, no. Kid won't be golfing anytime no. soon. Oh, God. Sorry. Sorry, Prince. Uh, Southwest Conference kind of on a membership drive, but yeah. uh, they don't know who they want. Well, and then they just really don't know what they want to expand now. And right now, they don't want to expand. Remember now, Arkansas is actually leading the conference. That only leaves them with eight members, and they were looking for a possible replacement. And one of the schools up for that possible replacement slot was Tulane, and they voted Tulane down. We'll have more on that when we come back. We'll also tell you that another manager has been fired in Major League Baseball. We'll show you who got the boot next.
This summer, relax and cool off with a hot entertainment on Paragon Cable. The biggest movies and flashiest specials on HBO. Exclusive hits and quality family programs on Showtime. Just ask for the basic HBO and Showtime summer fun package. Installation's only $6.95. Plus, check out Total Entertainment Basic Cable. Call 1-800-827-0304 now. Installation's only $6.95 at $33 savings. We make summer entertainment a breeze. I just want to take it slow I just want to taste that's rich Introducing Kraft 1898 Barbecue Sauce Slowly simmer the old-fashioned way For a rich, rich taste I just want to take it slow I just want to taste that's rich New Kraft 1898 Slowly simmered for a rich, rich taste for the best variety of the 80s and today, tune in 92.9 FM KSRR, the new Star 93. There will be no expansion of the Southwest Conference, at least not for now. That was decided today when the presidents of the eight Southwest Conference schools voted down to Lane's attempt to join the SWC. The conference had been looking at the Green Wave as a possible ninth member to replace Arkansas after the Hogs bolted to the Southeastern Conference, but this afternoon, they decided against it. At the present time, I think that the uh, uh, attitude on the part of the presidents are, uh, let's get our own house in order first, and then we'll determine where we should expand. Now, Pye added that the league would continue to pursue creative scheduling arrangements with the Big 8, the Big East, and other universities. The presidents did approve a proposal to create a new position in the Southwest Conference, a director of men's and women's basketball operations, who will be in charge of marketing the Southwest Conference tournament, as well as supervising the league's officials. If you want to keep your job, you better keep your team out of last place. Just ask Buck Rogers, who was fired today as a manager of the Montreal Expos, the fifth manager to get the ax this season. His replacement, third base coach Tom Runnels. Sometimes changes are needed. Uh, a new direction may be uh, needed. Maybe the players uh, are not responding in a manner that uh, is favorable. Uh, after a certain period of time, sometimes uh, players might do that and maybe that change just for change sake was needed now rogers was fired with the expos in dead last place in the national league east as a result his replacement now becomes the youngest manager in the majors at the age of 36 and makes his big league debut in houston tomorrow night now at the same time A's catcher Terry Steinbach was released from the hospital day after what happened to him in chicago late saturday night <laughs> Mm, that hurts. Most of that Bobby Figpin fastball, though, hit the helmet, but it still sparked a bench-clearing brawl. The A's say Steinbach suffered a mild concussion, probably won't play for a couple of days. And they also sent a letter to both teams saying, we do not want any retaliating. No, nothing happened tonight when Oakland uh, took on Chicago again in this series. 5-3 to three, the final there for the A's. A rain delay now with Toronto leading New York in New York 5-3 to three in the sixth inning. Detroit lost to Cleveland, shut out here. The Indians now complete a four-game sweep of the Tigers. The final there, 2-0, and Minnesota down Baltimore by 1, 3-2. Still, the Orioles are struggling. After stealing game one of this best-of-seven series, the Lakers now have to wait until Wednesday to resume the NBA Finals in Chicago. Both teams worked out today at Chicago Stadium after the Bulls were beaten on their own home court in game one, 93-91. Here's a shot that did it. Sam Perkins' three-pointer here with just over 14 seconds left to play in the game, but the Lakers aren't getting cocky. It's just one game and that you had to just play it like you still still zero zero or you're down one and uh as long as we can keep that in mind we'll be all right physically i was a little tired because of you know, naturally the four days off i mean uh, you take that four days off and then come back and play in a hard intense type of game uh, you know it's going to take some energy away from you and uh, offensively as well as defensively and uh, yeah, i feel that i'll be ready for the game too in terms of my physical aspect now, since the finals don't resume until Wednesday night in Chicago, what are these going, uh, guys going to do here to pass the time? Truth or dare. Madonna will keep you focused, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so uh, that's, what, that's what we plan to do, but we're going to relax and uh, go see Truth or Dare, check out Madonna, see what the big deal is all about, and, and just relax. <laughs> and that'll keep your mind off the weight. Uh, when we come back, French Open and boxing up next.
Whether you've just got a question or a medical problem, the only person with the right prescription for what ails you is a doctor. If you don't have a doctor, call Doctor Source from Methodist Hospital, 692-4884. Because only a doctor knows for sure. In about an hour, you can get a desirable new look. A glowing look. An approachable look. In about an hour, get the one look that's right for you at iMasters Optical Superstore with eyewear specialists to help and in-store labs so even no-line bifocals and trifocals are ready in about an hour. For the look you've been looking for, in about an hour, get a better look at iMasters. Buy one, get one free, or get $25 off a single pair. And San Antonio's Alfred Rangel was shooting for a world title tonight when he took on former kickboxing champion Troy Dorsey for the IBF Featherweight Championship. But Rangel's attempt to bring home the belt fell short when he was knocked out at 237 in round one with a crunching right to the jaw by Dorsey. That started tonight's card at Caesars Palace, which featured Thomas Hitman Hearns facing Virgil Hill in defense of his WBA light heavyweight championship. That bout has not gone underway as yet. In Paris, the number one ranked player in the world, Stefan Edberg, crushed Soviet Andrei Cherkasov to reach the quarterfinals of the French Open here. Now, Cherkasov is in the near court here, makes this error here when uh, Edberg goes to the net. He tries to get it by Edberg, but it's wide. He knows it. Edberg appears to be getting stronger with each match, goes to the net again, and once again forces the Soviet to return wide, winning in three sets, seven, six, six, four, six, three. The feature match tomorrow will be Boris Becker and 1989 French Open champion Michael Chang. Good luck to the Clark Cougars who will be making their first trip ever to the State High School Baseball Tournament in Austin this week. The Cougs earned the right to advance to the state tournament after they beat MacArthur this past uh, Friday night in a game that came down to the final inning. Clark down 4-3, 2 on here when Aldo Velasquez slams his full count hanging curve over the fence for a three-run homer, a 6-4 to four victory in the regional championship game. Now, Clark's first opponent in the state tournament will be Clear Creek. That'll be on Thursday at 5 p.m. up in Austin's Dish Falk Field. That, of course, the home of the Texas Longhorns, where they get their first trip to the state tournament. And if they win that game, then they advance to the championships, and good luck to them. That is a those, big moment those for those one kiddos. one-game eliminations, though, they seem a little unfair to me. It's tough here, especially when you get to that level, when you're just in the state tournament and one loss knocks you out. And also, Fredericksburg as well is also going to the state tournament. That's their first time ever. And they have a huge pep rally schedule for this week at high noon in the square. Great. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. When we come back, Leningrad Lonely Hearts, Soviet women seeking Western companionship after this. Not only does the Anderson Frenchwood patio door add beauty to a room, no other French style patio door is more weather tight. In fact, there may be only one way air and moisture can get through it. Get the book that's filled with Anderson window and patio door ideas. Northside Building Materials San Antonio and T.J. Moore Lumber Company, Ingram. Buy any computer product this week at Best Buy and have no payments and no interest for six months. This Packard Bell 386SX has a 40 meg hard drive, dual floppy drives, built-in modem and send receive fax board, and a mouse. Color VGA monitor, one-year on-site service, Lotus Works, and Prodigy software are all included. All for just $14.99. Get six months of no payments and no interest on any computer product you buy this week at Best Buy. Our Constitution originally said nothing about creating political parties, but all of the ingredients were there. Democracy, free speech, and the right to assemble. Out of this grew our system of political parties. They give Americans a choice. Remember, voting is a responsibility as well as a privilege. At the law offices of Pat Maloney, we salute the spirit to be free. Stomatics air duct cleaning process reduces mold, mildew, dust, and other contaminants in your home by up to 85%. Why wait to breathe cleaner air in your home? Call Blackman Moore in Stomatic today. Finally tonight, under From Russia with Love, meet the Glasnost Girls, a whole catalog of Soviet women who are pledging loyalty and devotion to any foreigner who will marry them and provide them with a ticket out of the Soviet Union where economic heartache is soaring. There are 500 Soviet women in this mail-order bride catalog, which is being marketed in Great Britain and America. The founder of the catalog is herself looking for the right foreigner, and she says already there have been two successful pen-pal pairings. 
so the girls would like to marry anyone, mm, not anyone, but someone who, are, uh, who, really, uh, who they really like, but uh, who can uh, provide uh, a normal life for them. I don't mean a millionaire or something like that, but just normal life. You know, like a life that Greg Simmons, for instance, could provide them. There you go, Greg. COD. A delivery that you can keep paying for. For everybody here at KSAT 12 News, have a good night. Do you like those Soviet ones? Oh, they're very nice. Yeah. Everybody's very nice. KSAT 12 News, San Antonio. Affiliated with ABC News, where most Texans watch the news.